You Can Live Forever follows the story of Jamie who recently moved in with her aunt after her father passes away and her mother needs time to recover. This story is a forbidden love story between Jamie and Marika. Jamie's aunt is a part of Jehovah's Witness. The truth is a huge part of our lives. And so she attends the meetings with her aunt and uncle. And at these meetings, she meets Marika, who is also a part of Jehovah's Witness. Do I call you sister Marika? It sounds weird when you say it. And they fall in love. Oh, it's so good. The tension, the chemistry. There's just so many like intense staring like I don't even know how else to explain it I feel like I feel very much like Jamie throughout the whole show trying to just understand Marika because it kind of just feels like Marika knows way more than I do and way more than Jamie does like she knows how this is gonna play out like that's how it feels at the start of the movie you trying to convert me not unless you want me to Marika is 100% the one that takes like all the initiative and Jamie's kind of just like stunned and is like, yeah, 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 I'm up for that. <laughs> Marika is the first one to reach out. She invites her over for the first time. She sort of initiates intimacy for the first time. Like they're sleeping in the same bed and they start snuggling. She's also the first one to initiate their first kiss. It was so bizarre though like because they had this whole thing where everyone thinks jamie is a bad influence on marika you're worldly they have this whole thing about you can't celebrate your birthdays but jamie was upset it was her first birthday without her dad so her friend nate took her out for a cake and it caused a whole thing it's her birthday it's not a big deal and so everyone's like you can do whatever you want but if you want to spend any more time with Marika, you need to respect her beliefs. Frank would like it if you're going to spend time together, that you do it in a more supervised setting. So they do a lot of field service and a lot of Bible study just to hang out. And after a Bible study session, they're walking home and like, Jamie's like, Are we allowed to do this? And Marika's like, Just walking home. If you say so. And she's like, oh, you know what we should do? We should pray. And Jamie's like, um, okay <laughs> if you want like jamie is whipped for marika like she will literally just do whatever marika wants she doesn't care about praying she doesn't care about bible study or anything like that but she's like you know what if you want to that's fine with me babe would you want to pray with me really it makes me feel good and then like at the end of it marika just kisses jamie and jamie's like what <laughs> Marika just completely like changes topics and was like, I'll see you later. It doesn't acknowledge the kiss whatsoever. <sighs> this is what I mean. Like, I feel like I'm Jamie, like just totally confused. I'm not even sure if it was a real kiss, but you know, I hear for the ride. <laughs> So then Jamie's like, okay, all right. So I'm, I'm going to keep doing these Bible studies and these field services because they, they reward me nicely. <laughs> But then, like, they have this moment where Jamie feels like she's understanding the situation and she tries to hold Marika's hand in the car and Marika's like, oh, no, no, no. And so Jamie's totally confused, as am I. <laughs> and then Marika, like, invites her out on, like, a double date and they have this intense scene where, I, like, like, Marika, like, leads Jamie to the bathroom and they just, like, they don't kiss, but they just kind of, like, have this really intimate scene together. And I... Ah, the chemistry. And you know how I said, I feel like Marika knew exactly her feelings, knew exactly where this was going. Like even before Jamie or us as the audience did, right? Towards like the second half of the movie, I feel like I sort of like get a, a, a better understanding of Marika. And it's not and like, she doesn't know, obviously. She, she puts up a good front, but she does have these conflicting feelings of, I feel like she very much knows how she feels about Jamie. There's no conflicting feelings there. And I feel like that's where all this initial maybe bravado comes from, this initial connection. Like she had no hesitation. I don't want a record of this. You don't want a record of our very first field service together? But I feel like the further into the movie we get, the the closer these two get together, 
the more she sees that her feelings for Jamie are, are going to conflict with her feelings for her religion, which is very much does. It's a very big conflicting point in the movie is her religion. When they leave the movie theater, they're on their ride back and oh, she just... <sighs> She wants to reach out to Jamie, but I, I guess she doesn't know how with all these other things happening. But they, she chases her out of the car when they drop her off and they have this really passionate kiss at the back. And it kind of just goes from there. Like they have like this sort of really like cute montage of, you know, them hanging out under disguise of, you know, field service and all that sort of stuff where, you know, they're just finding excuses to be close with each other. But of course this leads to, you know, a big point. They get seen in the street being close by Jamie's uncle who then goes to Marika's dad and all this sort of stuff blows up. Marika tells Jamie that, I'll talk to them. I know what to say. But then we jump to like a meeting. They get, Jamie gets taken to another meeting. She hasn't talked to Marika in a while. I am overjoyed to announce the engagement of my youngest daughter, Marika, to brother Marc Olivier Lajoie. Obviously, Jamie's heartbroken and leaves. I do have to say, like, I mean, I'm not a religious person at all, right? But I do appreciate Jamie's aunt. She's obviously very religious. She very much believes in the truth and Jehovah and is Jehovah's will. She's very much a part of that. But even still, she still has a lot of love and care for Jamie. Outside of that... You're not going to pretend I'm dead, are you? I love you. No matter what. Ally. And I, I just, I don't know. I just, I really appreciate Jamie's aunt in this movie. Anyway, so it, it all blows up. Uh, Jamie's heartbroken. Marika is devastated that Jamie <laughs> didn't stick around, I guess. But then Jamie goes over to Marika's place. And oh, this scene tore me apart. I'm not going to lie, because it was really like, it really shows Marika's struggle with her love for Jamie and her love for her religion. When paradise comes... We can be there. We can do all the things that we planned. But it's like, you know, from Jamie and like, you know, I guess from my point of view, the audience point of view, it's like, we can do all the things that we want to do now. We don't have to wait for later. We can just do that now. But yeah, it was just such a heartbreaking scene because there's just such conflict there because she does love Jamie, but she, she, she doesn't know how to do it in her world. So this inevitably leaves Jamie to leave because she doesn't believe in it all. She's not going to, you know, get married to some guy in the hopes of a future with Marika in an afterlife. I don't believe in it. You don't have to. I can believe enough for both of us. So she leaves and then it does a bit of a time jump. It's probably between, you know, three or five years. Jamie's got another girl in her bed, but she's going back to visit her aunt. And Marika shows up at the train station to pick her up instead of Jamie's aunt because she wanted to see her. And again, these scenes like kill me, like especially the scene at the end where Marika doesn't let Jamie leave the car. Cause she's like, and Jamie's like, are you okay? And she's like, no. I think about you all the time, about us. Do you? And Jamie's like, every day. They have this moment that throws back to some other time in the movie where they were really happy together. Not gonna let me go? Wait, not gonna let me go. It's a, it's a sad ending, but it kind of, it also kind of has some hope to it, like, cause it ends. But I choose to believe after this moment, Marika decides to stay with Jamie <laughs> and go with Jamie. Look, that's what I choose to believe, but I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that it's also a really sad ending because if she does, she'd have to leave her kid behind, right? Because the whole Jehovah's Witness thing, like Marika's mum also chose the left, but the kids would, would we're told. We're supposed to imagine that she's dead. Which is, oh, heartbreaking. So if Marika did that and she has a kid now, oh, it's just such a messy situation, but it's just, yeah, it's such a weird, satisfying, not satisfying ending. But I don't know, they've just got so much chemistry. I feel like the story is really compelling as well. Because like I said, as someone that's not religious, I really felt for Marika and it's like, oh, I could feel that conflict. Now this film had been doing like the the film festival circuit, but 
Thankfully, it's going to be on uh, digital on demand on the 5th of May. So anyone that hasn't had a chance to watch it yet, I recommend watching it. It's, it's yeah, like I mentioned, it's just, ooh, it's good. But if you're interested in any other TV shows or movies that are coming out in May, check out this movie that I did here. Also, hit the subscribe button if you're new. Otherwise, I'll see you all in my next video. Okay, bye.